Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on a quick review of Teacher's Dead by Benjamin Zephaniah. Zephaniah is one of those authors where I want to read all of the books that he's ever written. There have been a few that I picked up and really didn't like, so I find them to be quite hit and miss. But spoiler alert, this was a hit for me. I'm going to go through and read you the blurb, then I'm going to go and check out my tabs and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads. My name is Jackson Jones. I stood and watched a teacher die. For the first time in my life I felt real shock. My whole body actually went numb. They say the brain is like a computer. Well, my computer crashed. Teacher's dead, murdered by two of his students in front of the school, in front of Jackson. But Mr. Joseph was a good man. People liked him, respected him. How could those boys stab him and jog away like nothing had happened, without any sense of having done something wrong? Unable to process what he has seen, Jackson begins his own investigation into the murder. Everyone knows who did it, but as Jackson uncovers more about the boys, he becomes convinced of the need for people to understand why. Okay, so um, I thought this had quite a powerful opening paragraph here, so I'm just going to read this out to you. Chapter 1, The Ending. The knife was pushed so far into Mr. Joseph's stomach that it almost came out of his back. Lionel Ferrier closed his eyes, held the handle tight, and turned it vigorously. Mr. Joseph grunted towards the sky as the knife was twisted deep into his intestines, and as the sharp stainless steel sliced through his organs with so much force that it splattered Lionel's chest. Lionel pulled the knife out and jogged away slowly with his friend Ramsey Sanchin following behind him. And I thought this was a very damning like indication of the response, which is probably what would happen if this happened even today in, in Britain. The Queen sent a message and spelt the school name wrong. And the Prime Minister sent us a message saying how proud he was of the way we all handled a time of great difficulty. But a month before he had been on television calling us a failed school, threatening to close us down or send in a super head teacher. And we learn about some of the weird things these kids did. So he, um, our main character, what's his name? I can't remember his name, Jackson. Um, he's talking to a kid called Warren who used to hang around with uh, Lionel and Ramsey. So what kind of things did you do? I asked. Weird things. Weird things like what? Warren lowered his gaze as he began to recall. One day the three of us took it in turns to stare at each other to see who could outstare who. I've done that, I said. That's not weird, people do that all the time. No, but if you were the first to look away, you'd have to bite the fingernails of the others. That is a bit weird, I conceded. Yes, that, that is a bit weird. And then the kid gets, uh, Jackson gets doused in piss by one of the characters. Lovely. And Miss Ferrier, who is the one, the woman, the, the, mo the mother of one of the children, the one who doused uh, Jackson in piss. Um, she says, all kids are alike, no manners, no discipline, no anything. And here we get chapter 17, the family extension. And this is quite interesting in terms of it. It takes a look at like legal language. It says, after we parted, I went to the library where I went on the internet and skimmed through a few books, looking at this whole idea of being detained at Her Majesty's pleasure. I thought it was a strange use of the word pleasure, and a very strange sentence indeed. I found that some people who had received this sentence had been released in a year, whilst others had spent over 20 years inside. It was believed that there were some people who would never be released. I thought of it as a non-sentence. It was like saying, look, we have a bag of sentences, but we don't know which one is for you, so we'll just keep you locked up until we've worked it out. In the silence of the library, I thought hard about Lionel or Ramsey, and I couldn't decide who I thought had received the worst sentence. And we get this line, he invites um, Miss Ferrier over, over for uh, food for dinner at his house. And he goes, oh, Miss Ferrier, there's one more thing. Don't tell me you're vegans, she said, rolling her eyes. And that just made me chuckle because I am vegan. But so is Benjamin Zephaniah. I don't know if he was at the time he wrote this, though. And his mum's called uh, Jackson. His mum is called Mary Joseph. Which is obviously very biblical. So I want to read you this uh, chapter start, chapter 23 on the home front, and this is when he goes to visit um, the person whose um, husband died. Oh, okay, so Mrs. Joseph is the teacher. It's been a while since I've read this, as you can tell. Anyway, after school I thought it was time for me to report in to Mrs. Joseph. I called my mother to tell her I'd be a bit late, and then I called Mrs. Joseph to arrange a meeting at the sports centre, but she insisted that this time I should go to her house. From the outside, Mrs. Joseph's house looked like our house. All houses looked the same in our area. But inside, it was like a library. From the moment the door was open, all I could see was books. The hallway was full of shelves that were full of books. The front door couldn't fully open because of them, and so it was, and so it was up the staircase. Hello, Jackson. Come in, said Mrs. Joseph. Wow, so many books. Have you read them all? No, she replied. I like reading, but I'm not this mad about books. These were Edgar's. He was crazy about books. He used to say that he never read all of them, but he knew what they were all about, and he knew where to look if he needed to find something out. I didn't believe him, though. What, you thought he was lying? Yes. You mean they were just for show? No, she said, waving her arms about. I mean, I think he read all of them. 
Yeah, it sounds about right. And then um, Jackson goes to school and some people are making like a um, like a murder documentary about the, the dead teacher and he wants no part in it and they're trying to convince him to do it and he says no and no means no. And I just thought it was interesting that this is like a kid who has to remind the adults about the idea of consent. So yeah, all in all, Teacher's Dead by Benjamin Zephaniah. I definitely think this is one of his better books. It was pretty well written and um, it just, it deals with a, a tough subject, but quite sensitively, you know? Um, I also thought it did a great job of showing the different ways that different people grieve. It all just felt very realistic. Um, and it, even though it's middle grade, it dealt with some heavy subjects, but didn't feel as though it was talking down to kids, you know? So overall, I gave Teacher's Dead by Benjamin Zephaniah a four out of five. So there we have it, that's what I made of Teachers Dead by Benjamin Zephaniah. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.